Tossing Grenades at Windmills Podcast. But, um, so he got me down off the roof and he fired the babysitter. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Another story they tell when I was little. Do you want to hear these silly stories? Yes, or? because other people probably okay. will. So please okay. go on. Okay. All right. So um, another story that uh, they told me was when uh, my fa- my we had a mouse in the kitchen and my father caught it and killed it and she said she was in the living room and she heard all this whispering in the kitchen and a few seconds later I came out holding the mouse by the tail <laughs> she, heard, she heard all this whispering and giggling and I came out holding the mouse by the tail and dangling it in her face uh Let's see, what else? Oh, I didn't finish the story about the painting, did I? You did not. Um, yeah, so I had painted the kitchen with black enamel paint. Ew, what in the hell is that? Skip's playing uh, Fallout and it's nasty. <laughs> anyway, um, um, so my earliest memory from before I was two and a half when we moved to Paul's Church is in the bathtub underwater seeing the water from the faucet under the water level of the tub you know what i'm saying so i could see the stream the heavy stream of the water pouring into the tub my mother says that the cute story is you know you'd done this you'd painted the kitchen and and I was a little angry, so I held your head under the water a little longer than I should have, a little too long. And when I pulled you back up, you'd been rubbing your eyes, and I got paint all over my eyes. So she said, you look like a little raccoon. <laughs> and my earliest memory is of almost drowning, so that's another phobia. That's my biggest phobia, actually, is drowning. Um, it's really hard for me to watch scenes in films where people are drowning. For that reason, or on TV or whatever. Um, uh, let's see other cute stories she tells. Uh, let's see. You were talking to well, that would also guy, explain why you didn't swim and, a lot. I mean, I always thought it was because you were very body conscious or something. But if you're actually afraid of drowning, then no, no, no. It was fear. It. I hated. I, I was terrified of drowning. And my father was determined I was going to learn to swim. And, of course, my father was, when he was determined I was going to learn something, he was a fanatic about it. So, you know, I, I didn't have really much of a childhood as a kid, I, except when they were gone. When they were gone or when we went summers to visit my mother's family in Black Mountain, you know, and then I got to be a kid um, and play with all my cousins and run around barefoot. The rest of the time I wasn't allowed to run barefoot. Uh, I wasn't allowed out when my dad was home. He just wanted to keep me in and away from everybody. You know, my father had a brain injury, and brain injuries do screwy things to people. He had brain surgery, and plus he had PTSD and severe panic attacks. You know, so, you know, he had issues. So, and, and my mother had issues because, and, you know, she was, I'm sure she was abused by her siblings when she was not her parents but her siblings she had a, an older sister grace who was well no that's interesting insane. i mean i knew that they were insane and, and i knew uh, that she had been slightly <laughs> um harassed by this, but that's the first time i've ever actually heard you refer to them as abusing her that's interesting she doesn't really have memories of it but it's it, we began talking after she moved in we had some finally had some useful conversations um you know, I, you know, I, a lot of her weirdness about things, I'm sure, is her mother was Dutch, and as she, as she put it, her mother could squeeze a penny till it screamed. Really, that's a highly interesting ability. I didn't know we had magical talents in the family. Do we have any video of this, or? <laughs> Oh, 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 I'm sorry, you were being metaphorical. Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> the thing is like, yes, anyway, uh, the cartoon at the beginning of Fallout is like terrifying. Anyway, um, where was I? Oh, she, 
and she talks about her mother sending them off to clean people's houses, which pissed her off. Um, she always felt like, why are we always going over to clean people's houses? It's one thing to take them food when they've had a death in the family or have somebody who's sick or had a baby or something, but why do I have to go over and clean their house? So uh, her, si her sister, Georgia, loved that. My mother didn't. Uh, my mother had no interest in becoming a housewife, I don't think. Yeah, I think I so, can guess why. Uh, and she never was. Georgia's she, the crazy one, right? I'm sorry. No, Georgia. Oh right, Georgia no, no. Is George, George is the one who was abused really cool. too. Who, who was? Oh, it was Grace. It was Grace. Grace was the oldest, and Grace is the alcoholic, and Grace was screwed up. She's yeah. also the, the one that had the oldest son that she. Yes, she's he. She doted on her oldest son and hated the other two children and regularly beat the hell out of them. They had miserable childhoods. So uh, their childhood, my cousin Betty and I can't even remember George, the other, Marion was the oldest. Uh, but Betty and her younger brother had pretty much the same experience growing up I did. So, you know, they were regularly, Mama got drunk and beat the hell out of them. So, because she really didn't want the other two children. She just wanted her beautiful boy that she doted on and made just, you know, it's kind of like Donald Trump and his sons, you know, his eldest son, <laughs> turned her son into a mini-me. And apparently her granddaughter is just as nuts as both of them, but I don't know. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but yeah, we had some interesting conversations in which I said, you know, I have a feeling you were abused as a child um, because... She got left with her sisters a lot because my grandmother was in her early 40s when my mother was born. Obviously a complete surprise. And, you know, my grandmother, she remembers her mother always canning and cleaning and cooking and stuff. And my mother, my grandmother apparently completely doted on my grandfather. Um... And, you know, he always got what he wanted. He, they had, he all, you know, he got his favorite foods for dinner and everything else. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, when I was growing up, it all sounded like great fun. The, the, as I, as she, we were talking about this stuff when we were older, and I never said it to my mother, but it sounds like my grandfather was really self-centered. Uh, and my grandmother doted on that. Anyway, she completely gave him anything. He, she adored him, so... You know, he was quite the character. He was really smart, well-read, wrote articles for the newspaper all the time, uh, worked, you know, the local polls, you know, during elections and everything else, but we'll get into that another day. But anyway, so my, you know, my mother says she would ask to go out to play with, go over to friend's house, and my grandmother would say, oh, they don't want to be bothered, you know, with you. Uh, so she'd you know, stay in the house, or a lot like I did, or she'd end up with her older sisters taking care of her. And, of course, we know that Grace was a psycho and a drunk, so I suspect, you know, a lot of crap happened to my mother when she was small um, uh, that caused her to be a little insane, period, and very insane with me and with, you know, her animals and so on. Um, <clears throat> but she mentioned an incident where, again, one of those ha-ha funny stories she told that I didn't find so funny. That you, you should have seen Skip's reaction the first time he heard that one. Um, I'm talking to a guy, and she reached over and pinched me, and I started crying. Ah! And the guy said, oh, what's wrong, little girl? What's the matter? Oh, she pinched me. And she thinks that, thought that was a hilarious story. And when she told that story in front of Skip, Skip was like, why, why did you pinch her? Why did you wait, wait, just wait, wait, so, so you're just talking to some random why guy? Why did you pinch her? And then she reached, reached over and she pinched you? Some... <laughs> no, no, not really. That's not really that funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is funny when you think about it. It's one of those things that Carrie Fisher says, uh, 
tragic incident plus time it, equals it's, humor it's or something like that. It's funny because she thought it was uh, funny. It's not funny because she's yeah. actually because it was actually funny. Yes. Exactly. 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 It's like it was obviously not funny to me at the time. Uh, but she was always telling funny stories like that, ha ha ha, that were about me getting hurt. Well, would have been funny about her hurting me, you know. Years to the day and pitched her like, you know, gone to a movie theater or something like that, seeing Gone with the Wind, and then all of a sudden you pitched over and you're like, ow, why'd you do that for, Josie? <laughs> well, remember twenty years ago when you pitched me? That's hilarious. <laughs> See, okay. Anyway, please continue. Anyway. <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, she also tells the story about talking to a guy, I guess, on the bus. Apparently, I was a very garrulous child. Somewhere along the line, I became much more reserved, probably from my mother pinching me because she got tired of me talking. Uh, my parents wanted me to be quiet most of the time, and I was a very ver vocal child, very verbal so my mother wanted me to be quiet and invisible unless she wanted me to, you know. When I was a senior, when I was in high school, when she'd come home from work, and she actually told the, the, the girls this when they were visiting one day, or at least Julie, um, she'd come home from work exhausted, and so I'd spend a half an hour to an hour telling jokes and dancing and singing and just entertaining my mother you know, because I knew she was at work and exhausted, and she dealt with a lot of jerks at work, so, um, you know. And she also tells a story about coming to pick me up from nursery school, and I was singing for the entire class, so um, I was very extroverted and unafraid of everything, and then, you know, and very verbal, and and then somewhere along the line, I became terrified of everything and everybody. So <laughs> now, I, now I have to take medication for panic attacks when I get around too many people. But I, I, you know, I do get on stage and perform, and singing is more frightening. I don't know why, but um, uh, <clears throat> anyway. so so far we've anyway. established that you're um, afraid of heights, drowning, crowds, people, and singing. And failure. <laughs> and dancing, and dancing in front of people, and failure, yes. Those are those are my okay. issues. Uh, different degrees. Dr drowning being at the top, drowning be at the, being at the top, and fear of heights is bad enough that when I play video games with uh, steep cliffs in them, I actually, my body reacts physically as if I'm about, you know, standing on a precipice. So a real precipice instead of watching a game. My mind knows that's ridiculous. My body doesn't believe me. So it, it's really weird to me that I react that way. But I'm not the only person who reacts that way. I know other people who react the same way. So I have to hand over the controller over to Skip when I'm playing a game like that sometime and let him go through that part. As, and then I'll, you know, and then hand it back to me for the less cliffy parts of the game. Um... The doctor, when I was uh, when I was a baby, told my parents I would never walk. I had some sort of a deficiency, a vitamin deficiency. Um, I suspect um, it was a vitamin D deficiency because it was common. They didn't, for the longest time, know where vitamin D came from and what caused. Um, I think it's rickets. Um, they thought it was one thing back around the early 1900s, and that was wrong. And then they didn't find out until after the 1950s that um, homogenization was taking the vitamin D out of milk or something. Anyway, um, but my mother, when I mentioned it to her, she says, "Well, you wouldn't drink your, you wouldn't drink your orange juice. You wouldn't drink anything but milk. So it may have been a vitamin C deficiency. I don't know, but it was apparently a common thing for uh, poor kids didn't get it because their parents couldn't afford homogenized milk or whatever. 
So uh, it became something that middle class and upper class families' kids got because they, they had the vitamin deficiency, and then they realized what was going on, so they started reinforcing homogenized milk with vitamin D. Um, of course, kids can just go outside and play and get vitamin D, too. So, um, <clears throat> although now that's kind of dangerous in the sun. Um, but, you know, I asked her, well, let me finish the story first. Anyway, boy, I'm all over the place as usual. Um, so, my parents were in the living room reading, and I came walking through the living room. Now, my thought was, and this is what I asked my mother, what parent doesn't know their child can walk? I mean, that's, most parents live for their child. It's one of those hallmarks in, the, in a new parent's life is their child's first step. So my parents didn't know I could walk. And <laughs> I suspect I spent a lot of time when my parents were home, or at least when my mother was home, in the crib with the bottle propped up in my mouth is what I think happened uh, because my mother would, you know, decide that's enough of Josie, put Josie in crib, you know, put the doll back in the crib. And um, she says that after I walked through the living room, they got curious and put me in the, the crib and stood there and watched as I put one leg on the rail, one foot on the rail of the crib, slid up to the top, Pull, and then put my foot down on the outside, you know, at the bottom of the crib, pulled my other leg over, and then dropped down to the floor and walked off. And my parents had no idea I could do this. <laughs> Unless you're a neglectful parent, you know if your child is standing and walking and, you know, doing things like that. So apparently I was clever enough at that age to figure out how to get out of the fucking crib. <laughs> Excuse my language. Shouldn't be saying that on this recording. But, compared um, to all the other uh, stuff we said about all the other people, you know, I think you're fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it just, to me, oh, no, that's that's not abnormal at all. <laughs> really? Did you know that when your children started walking, did you notice when they started standing? I bet you every one of them do remember when their children started walking, etc., 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 you know. <clears throat> So, um, anyway, so, but I, as a result of whatever that was, whatever vitamin deficiency is, that uh, my, the bone, my tibia in the front of your leg there is, uh, the bones in my legs are a little crooked. Uh, not a lot. Uh, and obviously, we moved to where there was, uh, I guess there was, um, fluoridation in the water because I have really strong teeth, um, which is good. Not that that matters, but um, let's see what else. My earliest memory from when we moved to Falls Church, we moved to Falls Church. Oh, okay. I'm wrong. I'm remembering wrong. I'm misremembering. Okay, so we lived in Burlington until I was about two and a half. And then at about two and a half, we moved to D.C. So this stuff I'm talking about happened between the age of two and a half and five. And then when I was five, we moved to Falls Church. And like I said, my mother told me we moved to Falls Church to get away from my father. And it was all my fault we stayed with him because I was afraid he would kill himself. So she made, she made that very clear to me that it was all my fault. She didn't put it in those terms, but... It was clear that it was my fault that we stayed with my father. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, my earliest memory in Falls Church is standing on a fire hydrant and slipping and hurting myself. And then another memory of playing with records. Um, back then, the, the vinyl records, children's records, were all kind of different colors. Uh, red and yellow and stuff like that. I don't remember any blue ones, but I had red and yellow ones. And I was holding a record and flinging it up in the air. Uh, I had it between my hands and was spinning it up in the air and catching it, and I missed, and it hit right by my eye, barely missing my eye, my left eye. And I think that I still have a scar there. I had a scar there for years and years and years and years uh, from that. <clears throat> so it's weird that I wouldn't remember that. 
Um, let's see. Um, I grew up from from the time we were there from the time I was five until I went to college. Then after I got married, my parents moved to Augusta, Georgia, uh, and I think it was around 1975, and it's weird because both your dad's parents and my parents picked up and moved about the same time. And I had never been homesick before. I never got homesick until my parents moved, and I realized I wasn't ever going back to Falls Church, and then I started to get really homesick. <laughs> it was funny. But um, his parents picked up and moved to Walnut Creek, California, and my parents moved to Augusta, Georgia then. But let's see, childhood stuff. <clears throat> What do you want to hear about? Yeah, well, like I mentioned, the I remember um, the record, and I remember the fire hydrant. <clears throat> I spent a lot of time in trees as a kid when my when I was able to go out. It was crazy. I can't remember, you know, when my mother was home, uh, I was allowed to go out and play. She encouraged me to go out and play. Um, and when my father was home, he really didn't want me going out. Uh, one thing I don't remember that my mother tells me, but I was older and this was in Paul's church, <clears throat> my father didn't want me fighting, uh, obviously because he got into trouble fighting when he was a kid and fighting when he was in the army. Shut up! Copyright. 2017 Red Anvil Amalgamated LLC. For more of this and other worlds, visit redanvilcreative.com. To fight the forces of evil!